Welcome to the edited live stream. We do these every single week. And if you want to catch this week's live stream, it will be at 5 p.m. Wednesday, the 26th Eastern time, of course. Come hang out with us as we make parts. But on this live stream, we made a part for one of our British subscribers. And we are going to be enlisting the help of Geeky Faye to make this a reality for her. She had a paper cutter that she wanted to mount underneath her desk. We got some measurements and we friggin' rocked it. It was one of the best live streams to date. So if you want to watch the full one, we'll have a card to that as well. But if not, enjoy this edited down live stream and I will see you in the next one. Wednesday at five, it's the 26th of May. Be there. We're gonna make cool stuff for the shop. Enjoy. Welcome, how is everybody doing? So we actually have a couple things we're gonna be doing today. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna start with a part from, wouldn't you know it, Allison. We are gonna be working on your gui uh, paper guillotine holder thing. If we've got the time, I might jump into a personal project of mine, which involves expansion of this company and what's gonna happen. Let's talk about Allison's project. And so we're gonna leave Big Grant up for just a second so we can discuss it, but she has one of those kind of generic roller paper cutter things. And really this is just a way to store the paper cutter. Let me open up these photos here. So we're gonna go to little Grant. We're gonna show you what is going on. So we've got two different, uh, two different photos from Allison and these are what I'm gonna be working off of. So this is the actual paper cutter that she is using. And these are the dimensions from it. And of course, I greatly appreciate the fact that she's giving it to us in millimeters. So A plus for that. Now, 380 millimeters is bigger than actually all but one of our printers. So this would be a part that I would recommend to make in multiple pieces and then glue it together with some sort of bonding adhesive. It could be CA glue. There's something called 3D gloop. Or if you like to take uh, risks and uh, you don't mind a little bit of extra safety precautions, methylene chloride is the main bonding agent inside of 3D Gloop. And it is like 60 bucks a gallon and you can buy it by the gallon for way less than you can buy 3D Gloop. So whatever. We're going to take a look at these parts. I'm going to have uh, this piece here, specifically this picture, open on my screen and then I'll be working on her part. That's not a bad idea. I think that that might work out a little bit better where uh, we provide Allison with two pieces and she can then put it up underneath her desk at whatever distance she wants. And that enables her, if she gets a bigger cutter in the future, something that's wider, something that's smaller, to just go ahead and move it. I'm going to get rid of this photo because it doesn't matter too much to me for what we're doing. And we are going to move this photo away. We're gonna bring, bring Small Grant into the picture. Hi, Small Grant. And of course we have the stunt double here with us because Victoria is off making sure that all the 3D printers are running happily. But the first things first, I am the realist. We need to get ourselves a new design here. This one, I think, is actually most effective to work from the front. So I'm over here looking at what my direction I want to work from, and I believe the front is the best option simply because we're going to be extruding outward. So I just need to make my profiles for everything. This should actually be not too bad. We are going to first get her basic system built. We don't, we want to keep the height to be no more than 20 millimeters, but if Allison wants this thing to slide in and out easily, we gotta make sure that we make it a little bit taller. So I'm gonna start with just a basic C channel and that's where we're gonna move forward from. So I'm gonna grab myself some lines and let's just start drawing. Done. No, no, we're not done. So we're gonna start doing some constraints here. Constraints like vertical and parallel to just put everything in line. There we go. We're looking at a max of 20 millimeters. So we're gonna start with our dimensioning tool. We're gonna grab this bit here. Boy, that's huge. Uh, we're gonna make it, I'm thinking 25 should be good. Give you an, uh, a, a, there we go. Uh, and so if that's 25, I'm thinking the exterior being maybe something like 50 should be adequate. No. Uh, it's the fun thing about parametric sometimes. You gotta look at the things that are gonna bother you the quickest. We are going to change the dimension of this. I'm thinking maybe, maybe 7, 6.7 millimeters on the bottom, about a quarter of an inch. Up here, probably about the same. I'm gonna go 10, just to make it a little bit easier. 
We have 25 and we want this distance. This thing is 380 millimeters wide. So we wanna make sure that we give it, you know, some, some structure, right, some strength. But because we need to also allow this to have a screw go through it, I've got some plans here. It's gonna end up with some fingers and it might end up for having a part with some uh, support material, but I think it's gonna end up being okay. I think this at probably 20 should be more than adequate. And that will bring this top section up to 30. 30, 30 sounds good. So we're gonna take the equals. We're gonna go, this is equal to that. This, so this is equal to this, which it already should be. Now we're gonna come, we're gonna grab a, uh, a point. I'm gonna put this point in the middle of the back. In the middle of the, oh. Uh, we are, nope, we're gonna make sure that we grab the center point here. I hit L and X to make sure I have a dotted construction line. I'm gonna grab that center point, come out a general distance hit the escape key, hit L again so I can come up as well because that is going to be important because we are going to mirror this thing. We are then going to take this point here and make it coincident onto here. And since we know the unit is 380 millimeters wide, we want to give her a little bit of leeway. So we're going to go to like 385. That should give, you know, plenty of distance. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy, not notebook, but phone because it has a calculator on it. 385 divided by 2 is 192.5. So we need to hit a distance between this and this to be 182.5. There you go. That is the basic of what we're doing here. So we're going to grab this. We know the unit is 145 millimeters long. We don't need to go that whole distance, although it looks like it does go all the way to 155. I'm figuring if we give like 120, I'm gonna do 110. That allows to be printed on a Prusa Mini. That should be adequate to hold it. So we're gonna hit E for extrude. We're gonna grab this section. We're gonna extrude out 110 millimeters. If all Allison was doing was just putting some Velcro up here or Velcro on here, we're, we're done. That's it. But we're not. We're gonna do more than that. So we're gonna do a little bit more. And that's going to involve some sketches from up top. So let's get, a, let's get a sketch tool. Let's grab the top section. We're going to hit P for project. We're going to project that top surface. That lets us know where things are. L and X. This will help us pick up our center. And now we have our direct center. So that's important to us because we want to make sure that everything that we're doing is across the center. So there you go. I want to make an ability for her to have a screw. Let's, let's make the whole five, five millimeters right? That should be fine. So what I did do is we didn't pick up where this is. So I need to pick up where that is as well. So this shows us with that purple line that is very, very hard to see. Uh, actually, ooh, I screwed up. We want to make sure that we get rid of the X. We want to hit project again, X to get rid of the construction line. So now, now we kind of see where things are. I accidentally deleted this. So we'll bring that back. And now we're going to hit X to get rid of it. We're going to hit C for circle. And we're going to make a couple of holes. We can, yes, you can always add washers if needed. So, so I'm thinking five millimeters might do it. These paper cutters are not heavy, right? It's not like one of those big ones from grade school where if you used it the wrong way, you'd be going to the emergency room. I don't think this is something that, that requires that. This is stuck on that line. Okay, it is. So we're going to do a dimension from here to here just so we can get an idea of where we're at from the center. Let's go 30. And I'm curious to see from here to here. And it's going to yell at me saying, hey, you're over constrained, but I don't care. I'm just curious to see this, the number. I'd rather this be then 25. That'll give you 50 millimeters in between. So I don't think you're hanging over more than 50 millimeters. Let's just verify. It's going to yell at me again, but that's okay. 30 millimeters. All right. So I'm okay with all of this. I think that'll give you lots and lots of room, but how are you going to be able to get the screw in? It's not, it's not going to fit. So we got to make something that's on the bottom so that you can get a screwdriver up into it, right? So let's take a look at what that would be because we want to remove as little material as possible, but we also want to make it easy to print. Having something that's at an angle would be easiest to print, but I mean, realistically, it doesn't need to be. I'm thinking we want to do a line. We could, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Grant's, Grant's like thinking in his head of what he wants to do. Let's do it this way. All right. I'm thinking we want to have, give ourselves at least like three millimeters. And okay, we have another line here, but now we're going to do, or a circle. We're going to do a line. We're going to come right off this edge. And you won't be able to see it there, but I will show you here. 
We're gonna go right into it. If you grab a center and you just come over, you see that dotted line? That tells me that I am in line with the center and I can come down to here. Now you might look at that and say, Grant, that's not level. You're right. And also I am a little cattywampus here. So we're gonna use horizontal vertical to click that. And it's not concentric. So what I'm doing is I want to make it concentric because I want to basically cut a slot out. I think the slot is really where we want to be for this. Uh, and because of that, I need to make it concentric. So we need to take this to that. Is that the right way to do it? Nope. All right. Why are you not concentric? Oh, tangent, you idiot. It's a tangent. Oh my God. It's not concentric. It's tangent. Sometimes, some friggin' times. So we're going to go ahead and hit extrude. We're going to extrude this one all the way through here, but we don't want to go all the way down yet. Going to bring this sketch back, hit E again, grab these pieces, but we need to do an offset. So we're going to do, a, instead of profile plane, we're going to go to offset. We're going to click this to cheat. We're going to offset, okay, negative 30 millimeters, just so I have enough, and then 35. And there you go. So if we want to mirror something, we can still go here into your create tab. You can go to mirror and we can actually mirror the faces. We're gonna mirror this face, this face, this face, and this face across. Right, Grant doesn't have a plane. So we're gonna do a construct mid plane. We're going to click that edge and that edge and boom, we've now just made ourselves a mid plane. Now we can come back here onto the mirror section. We're gonna do mirror faces once again. Mirror that face, this face, and this face across that plane. Click okay, and there you go. We have now just mirrored something that is a physical, physical piece. But before we do that, I wanna clean things up just a little bit. And you know me, what are we gonna do when we wanna clean things up? We're hitting the F key to pay respects for the fillets. Gonna add some fillets into here. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Is it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we've got that, that should be good. I do wanna add, it's a two millimeter. Let me see if I add a fillet onto here, how we look. Now we'll add a chamfer there and that's going to allow Allison to use a, um, countersunk screw so that will be three and a half i like three and a half better three and a half three and a half is good we can actually check something if we go back into sketch two we can see oh boy where'd we go here we are that we were five and then we went to eight so if we do instead of a three and a half millimeter if we do four it should actually it should match this exact uh path so that's kind of cool a little bit of something to keep in mind so that's what we'll do there we're going to do a chamfer which is right up there uh, we're gonna grab this bottom edge and we're gonna chamfer it. I think three should be more than adequate. Yeah, three should be plenty fine. Yep, 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 three is good. So now, turn off this sketch. So now when you put the screw in, you are able to put the screw in and it will be countersunk. So there you go. I mean, nice, 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 nice and simple. Now we have to go back and right, let's see if this works. It's probably gonna break. Nope. We can come back here and actually add some more faces in by hitting and holding control, grabbing that face, that face, and that face. There you go. There's our part. Um, is it pretty? No. Am I pretty? Not really. But so we're going to try to clean this up just a little bit by hitting, once again, F to pay respects for fillet. <laughs> Only the, like, the video game guys will get that joke, man. God, that's tough sometimes. All right, we're going to add some fillets up here. A one millimeter should be more than adequate. Actually, we're not gonna do that. We're going to do a fillet of this entire edge. So when you do an entire edge fillet, it's actually gonna grab the entire surface. And I want lots and lots of surfaces fillet on this because I don't want it to be very sharp. So even here, whoop, that's control, there we go. So this way things don't end up being very, very sharp. Now we don't want to deal with filleting those. It's just going to be a pain in the keister. So we'll, we'll leave it that way. And this should still print okay. Uh, but there you go. That should make it nice and happy. But Grant, you only made one piece. Oh, my dear, you have fallen into my trap card. We are going to mirror at the entire freaking body across this. So this is Allison Paper Cutter. Justin is saying a name on the end, so we will go ahead and do that. And actually, we will do this before we mirror the parts. That way, 
when we are the part, it just takes care of it. So we will add her name right on the end. We're going to project this surface because that's what we're going to need. We're going to go to create. We're going to go to text. We're going to grab the point here and go all the way to there. Allison. And we are going to use... I've got some really fun fonts. We are going to do that. And we are going to finish the sketch because that is all we need from it. We are going to extrude it in a uh, negative one millimeter maybe that should be enough i think uh and so we're gonna come back to the fillet here i'm actually going to turn off that edge because now we're gonna hit the fillet one more time and that will allow us to do a one millimeter fillet here oh no it doesn't like that oh no are you not gonna like the fillets okay just had to be a half millimeter fillet okay all right so it's not all that even but hey whatever it works we could do the Benchy and do 0 0.2 millimeters. Um, we could, but I wanted to have a little more depth to it. And so you might initially think, wait a minute, this is not, this is going to actually make the part weaker. And you would be wrong. It won't. Because what's going to happen is as it, and you know what, here, I'm, we're going to do this my way. All right. So now we have our part. Ooh, I wonder. That's fine. That's all fine. All right, because uh, I'm just going to flip this part horizontal. I bet I can actually just do this. Let's see if we can do that. This one, I want to... There's got to be a way to... What is it that he is thinking of that he wants to do? I want to, like, literally mirror it on itself. Would that work? Let me find out. Uh, I have the construction line back here. So that body mirror plane is that. Ha! Good enough. There we go. So we have Allison running correct both ways. And when we have a body that we're not going to use anymore, we can just hit remove, and that remove actually stays within the history. He's right, we don't need to mirror it, we can just print the same part twice. Don't care, this is how I did it, this is my live stream, and we're going to do it my way. <laughs> um, Alright, let's download these bad girls, so we're going to go to right click on it, save as STL, we're going to save it, I'm going to come here, open up Prusa Slicer, of course it's way too big when you bring these in. So how are we going to fix this? We are going to hit the object, split into object button. Then we're going to hit the center. And that brings everything into where it needs to be. We're going to grab a part. We're going to grab this tool here to place on face. Boom and boom. Done. This is the orientation they need to print it because this will be the strongest. Straight up will be the strongest. And because it is going to bother me, I'm going to flip this one over. I want the A's at the top for both of them. All right, we're going to talk about the paint on supports for Prusa because those are pretty cool. We're going to do the auto set by angle and we can look on here. We can see where it wants to put supports. I know for a fact that a Prusa can handle 25, no problem. And so we'll hit enforce, but we really don't need to support the inside there. So we can up our brush size. If you hit and hold the shift key, it just removes the support material that it just made and this is paint on supports one of the newest features of prusa slicer this does not need to be supported either it will handle it just fine la 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 nobody wants all that friggin support material cool so if we look and we do let's go with support enforcers only now we look and we can see okay yes there are some bridging perimeters they might sag a little bit i don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal that's that'll be fine it's just that right there that I'm worried about. Interesting because I only did for support enforcers only. And clearly I missed. Oh, I, I know what I missed. We're going to come back in here. We're going to look. I bet money. Yep. There it is. Go away. So we're going to do the same thing over here, but we're not going to make any of the changes. Okay. So all I did was just go into the paint on supports, auto set by angle, 25% in force. And that's it. We were done. I'm going to slice these both and you're going to see the difference in them. Look at all that. Nobody wants to deal with that. And guess what? It doesn't make anything better. All right. So we have our one part and it is gyroid, which honestly gyroid. Gyroid is great for uh, time lapses, but it's it just takes too much time for everything else. Like way too much time. So I think the one that we give away, we will get rid of Allison's name on it because that's just weird to give something to somebody that has a different name. But if you look, you see, you know how I was talking about earlier that, oh, the name is going to make it weaker and actually it's not going to because one, you end up with these perimeters that move around some more. It gives your part more rigidity, right? But then you also get these solid layers that build in that basically give you that extra thickness that you need. And so like in an area that would have been originally relatively thin, it's now solid material right from here to here and it's only got this little bit of infill. So. I would argue 
that this is actually stronger. Okay, so there you go. And if you look at it, this would be a three hour and 44 minute print. It would use 39 grams of filaments. And I believe, what does Prusa use for its price of filaments? It uses $27, uh, which I think is, you know, pretty good value if you're buying material straight up. So if this was your own printer and you were doing it for yourself, you're looking at less than $2, realistically, less than $3 to build this part, which is crazy, crazy cool. And Justin is totally right. I can just do this and I can hit the plus key and that just gives me another one. There you go. Ladies and germs, we have it done. There's our part. I'm excited, guys. I think this is a great part. Good energy on this video. Let's talk about what's going on here in the shop. You know, no, let's bring up Big Grant. Big Grant, Big Grant can show you what's going on in the shop. So we have got this whole section. And if you notice, it's a little dark over there right and it's dark over there because we are missing the lighting and actually we have lighting that i have controlled here by this remote this turns the lighting on and off so one of the maker projects in the next couple of days i'm actually going to install the lighting over on this side and it's going to be on a clip system so we can unplug it if we ever do move everything over but even further that is where the enclosed printers are going to be. Ultimately, what's likely going to happen is that, Grant, since I, I know where it is, the minis, ah, I used it again as a prop. So we're gonna have two minis over here, two minis over there, and two of the Mark 3S's over there. And all the printers on that shelf are gonna be fully enclosed. Now we can open them up if we want. My thought was to use 2020 extrusions and we have those in stock. So I'm gonna show you, I have some 2040 right here from a project so this is 2040 it is 20 by 40 millimeters it's like the name makes sense and we can build anything we want out of this stuff using brackets using printed parts whatever but with acrylic we can actually build boxes to where you can slide acrylic in here and in here so you can basically build an enclosure box I would love to see if that's what you guys would like. I mean, if we could do a whole building project on it, I would love to like, do that with you guys where we're doing a build project and it's a little more like in the shop hangout kind of thing. We could do it where we just enclose the entire shelf, but I think enclosing individual printers as well. So having like, you know, things that go next to the printers would be a better move because then that enables us to run one printer at a time and it heat up its own chamber rather than having to heat up all of the other printers. My plan is to have the windows, so the window that would go down, pull out a little bit so you can use a, a thumb to pull up dividers, exactly dividers. So there would be dividers in between the printers and all this would be made out of 2020. Initially, we were thinking of just literally enclosing the entire thing with like visqueen, right? Something that we know is going to hold in the heat. It's dirt cheap. It's nice and simple. But I figured, wait a minute. We're trying to be professional YouTubers here. That's the cheater way of doing it. We got to do it the fun way by actually using really cool materials. It will just be a container that sits on top of the machines. And we will be able to literally unscrew them and screw them into each other. So let's say I needed to, I don't know, remove two of the printers. I can pull, you know, those dividers and the front backs and tops off and put them somewhere else. The material that I mentioned is aluminum extrusion. So this is aluminum extrusion. This is, an, it's known by its size. This is 20 millimeters tall by 40 wide. This is 2040. This is particularly called V-slot. It is V-slot because if you look here on the slot, it's got a chamfer on it for wheels. So this was, this is originally part of our big ass D bot, but this is actually the size of the build plate on our biggest 3d printer, 16 inches square. And it's then 31 inches tall. Yeah. This is a piece of acrylic. This was, um, we worked with a local college to build a new Z axis for the, for the D bot. And, uh, this is what they use to show the size of that Z axis in their presentation. But this material is great to build with because you can cut it with a regular chop saw. Heck, you can cut it with a circular saw. You can cut it with a jigsaw. And if you are a masochist, you can cut it even with a hacksaw. It's really, really easy to cut, but I figure it might be a cool way for everyone to kind of see that I'm not just a business owner. You know, the, the random guy that pretends he knows what he's doing in Fusion 360, that I also have some experience in building real parts properly so if you all want to see that next week next week we will plan to do that live stream next week 
5 p.m. Eastern. We are going to make awesome right here. That's really it for me, guys. I don't think there's much else for us to go over. But again, this was the part that we made. And then this is it inside of Prusa Slicer. Very, very, very cool. Smash that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave us a like, and remember that you too can make awesome, and we at Three Musketeers can help make that happen. Whether you think you can do it yourself or you want us to do it for you, we can help you make awesome every single day. My name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers. Don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome have a good one. Do better today than you did yesterday. And if today is tomorrow, keep doing awesome. Take care, guys.